Welcome to Empowering You for Victory on this Friday evening as we move into a wonderful weekend with our family and our friends, even during lockdown. I want to share with you tonight on faith to renew your mind. Faith to renew your mind. So important, the power that there is in the mind. In Romans chapter 12, from verse 1 to verse 2, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, meaning don't let this world squeeze you into its way of doing things, but be you transformed, inward change, by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is a good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Praise God for His Word. We are looking at spirit, soul, and body. And last night we looked on feeding your spirit and building up your spirit and exercising your spirit. And many times when you do that, it also has an effect on your soul, your mind. Praise the Lord. Now tonight we're talking about renewing your mind. Renewing your mind means you renew the software in your mind. Because people don't see the things the way things are. They see things the way they are in their minds. Your mind works like a camera. It takes a picture. Now this is your soul area working with your brain, which is your physical organ as well, and your soul organ. It takes a picture of your reality. Just like if I had a picture of myself in front of me, this picture will show me, show you that it's a representation of who I am. Unfortunately, with your mind, your mind does not take a clear picture of your reality. It takes a distorted picture. Now, you have to adjust that picture till you have a spiritual expression of your reality and you have a mental expression as well that is as close to reality as possible. And so you can bring that under your spirit man and you can adjust your mental reality to think spiritually. God has given you the mind of Christ for you to be able to think like Christ. The word Christ means the anointed one and he's anointing. So you can think thoughts in your mind that are actually anointed of God because they're the word of God. And so the way you do that is you have to change the software in your mind. Your mind is made up of two parts, the conscious part and the the unconscious part or subconscious part that some people say. Now, the conscious part is that part where you can control. You're in control of what you think presently. You can choose, in other words, what thoughts to think. But the unconscious part is the part that controls you. And so in your unconscious mind, there are thought patterns in there that have come from your history. Also part of it is from your genetics. 
And it's also part of your life's experiences and part of the environment that you've been brought up in. So there are thought patterns in your unconscious mind that are like windows or glasses that you look through and see your reality. In other words, if the glasses are green, even if you look at something that is red, it looks green. And so we have to change the software in our minds. I want to read in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22, and take note here, Paul is speaking about putting off an old man and putting on a new man and renewing the spirit of your mind. There is the cognitive part of your mind and there is the spirit part of your mind. You control the cognitive part, but the spirit of your mind controls you. Now, the more you consciously think the Word of God, meditate on the Word of God over and over through a power of choice, and you just feed the mind and you continually use that part that you can control, it can go through your gateway into your unconscious mind and it can change the software of your mind. In the same way that you can delete software in a computer or a phone and put new software. And my friends, many times, whether it's on your PC or your phone or your iPad, you can't just put new software without deleting the old software. And so the Word of God is so powerful, we saw that, that it's sharper than a two-edged sword. The more you consciously think about it, speaking it, meditating it, pondering about it, listening to it, it comes and seeps through the gate of the unconscious mind. Now, you know, it's not easy to get into that mind, unconscious mind. And you can get into there without you actually sometimes, or most of the time, being consciously aware that you're getting in there. But you get into there, and you suddenly realize that the Word of God is changing the program in your unconscious mind. And it's a process. It doesn't happen at once. As you're continually meditating and studying the Word of God, then there is a continual renewal. There is a re restoration. There's a refurbishing of the software in your mind. We all got to do it. And as long as we're living in this world, our minds is being fed with information from a negative world. And everywhere you turn, your eyes is seeing negative things. Your ears are hearing negative things. That's why the Bible says you must guard your heart with all diligence. Because once something goes into your mind and you're continually thinking about it, it will become an intention in your heart and it will pollute your heart. Look at Ephesians 4, verse 22 to verse 24, that you put off concerning the former conversation or manner of living, the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. The old man is that man that was unsaved. Now remember now, your spirit man got born again, but your mental man was not born again. You have to keep changing that. So the programs of your unsaved life from childhood, in fact, can go right back to when you're in your mother's womb, are really still part of your unconscious mind. And it affects your mind. And that's why it will even affect the strongholds that the devil's using to try to destroy you. So you must put that off. Now, putting something off is like taking a garment and putting it off. 
is covering you. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. It's not saying now being renewed in the conscious part of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Now, when you get renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man, oh, Jesus, which is created in, which is create, which after God is created in, in righteousness and true holiness, praise the Lord. So you see, it's like this. You take a coat off and you take another one and put it on. But before you can put the other one on, you have to change the software in your mind to actually start thinking like the new man. Many, many years ago, I heard Dr. Bill Winston say, your life will always follow your dominant thoughts. And your dominant thoughts are the pilots of your life. Dear friends, your thoughts that you continually think are creating your future. The bottom line of that is that your state of mind determines the outcome of your life. God richly, richly bless you as you go into this weekend. Just be aware of the thoughts that you continually think. And be aware of your perceptions, of your reality, your perceptions of your family, your spouse, and your children. Be aware of all these things and understand that you've got to continue adjust those perceptions till that they are close to reality, uh, the way God sees it and the way the factual uh, facts actually reveal it to you. So God richly bless you. You are a work of God in progress. So don't you go into condemnation. You are a child of God. You're the righteousness of God. But in your mind, your mind is being renewed. So transformation can take place. As your mind is renewed, you prove the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. You start seeing the will of God being manifest in your circumstance. I decree and declare over your lives that you are empowered to work with the word of God and to begin to see the word of God transform your life internally and change your circumstances to line up with the eternal word of God. That is called manifestation of sonship. God richly bless you. Allow me to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your precious people, Lord. And as we go into this weekend, we thank you that we are co-laborers. We are fellow workers together with God, that we are the field of God and we are the building of God. But we are also planting into our own minds and hearts and we are also building, together with God, our lives, spirit, soul, and body. I bless your people now, Lord, that they have the tools. They are empowered to see change in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God richly bless you. Have a lovely weekend. I'll see you on Sunday morning at Hopper Street. And Sunday evening, we'll be in our auditorium at 6 o'clock. You don't miss that. After empowering you for victory in our auditorium, we will go into a prayer meeting until 7 o'clock. So don't miss that. Make sure you register for Sunday morning. And make sure you do everything in your power to be assembled together with the believers. Online is wonderful but it's not the same as assembling yourself together. God richly bless you. Bye-bye.